like that music, huh? Don't it make you want to dance? Don't it make you want to smile? Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen to that. But I'll tell you what. This has been a, a, a wonderful ride right here. Coming to church every Sunday morning. Fellowship with my brothers and sisters. Seeing y'all through the week. Every, I'll get up here and see some of you through the week. And, 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 and it's just awesome. Just can't can't tell you how wonderful it is to have brother, Christian brothers and sisters that you can fellowship with. You can... Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, we're good. All right. Turn or just turn me down. Okay. <laughs> well, turn me down, turn the Lord up then, by golly. Yeah. <laughs> but have Christian brothers and sisters around that you can fellowship with. That when you need a hug, they'll hug you. When you need a kick in the backside, they'll give that to you. It's just wonderful. Matter of fact, I was reading, I had a sermon and, and, and was working on it earlier in the week and then I sat down last night and I said, you know, I had a sermon and God just kind of took it away from me. I, I've been reading several different places in the Bible. Two places I kept coming back to. I, I just kept coming back to them because it, it really, this is the way it feels to be a Christian. And I'll tell you what they are. First, it's going to be in John 17. Oops, the wrong one. John 17, 13 through 17. No, 13 through 16. The other one's going to be Psalms 120 and 121. I'll give y'all a chance to look those up while I'm, while I'm rambling here. But the thing is, every time that you start to feel down. God puts it on your heart and somebody calls you or sends you a text and says, hey, just want to let you know I'm thinking about you today. You know, I love you. God loves you. Hope your day's going great. And it could be someone I haven't talked to in years. Uh, the first per church we preached at was uh, out in East Texas. And uh, there's a lady that just, out of the blue one day, I was I was having a bit of trouble. And, you know, you know human mind gets, gets to working at you. Out of the blue, I get a phone call. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, somebody's passed away, you know, or something. And I picked up the phone and said, hello. She said, uh, Pastor, I just started thinking about you today. I just wanted to call and tell you how much I love you. You know, and, and that kind of brightened my whole day up. You just can't beat something like that. To have that kind of a family. Christ was talking about that when he was praying. In John, and I gotta get these little spectacles back out because I didn't memorize these. Someone asked me the other day, I notice you don't use your glasses a lot when you're up there preaching. When you have when you can read from the Bible, I said, No, actually I kind of memorize them when I'm <laughs> when I'm reading them. That way I don't have to get these things out. Uh Christ said, and he's praying in the, in the garden, he's praying about his disciples. He said, now, I'm, I'm coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world. So they would be filled with joy. I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them out of, not to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Hmm, how's that? They're, they're in the world, but they're not of the world. Why is that? Simple. Psalms 120. Psalms 120. You're going to like this one. When troubles get to you, David says, I took my troubles to the Lord. I cried out to them. And he answered my prayer. <laughs> Rescue me, O Lord, from liars and from all the deceitful people. O deceptive tongue, what will God do to you? How he will increase your punishment. 
You will be pierced with sharp arrows along and burned with glowing coals. How I suffer in far off Michigan. It pains me to live in distant Kedar. I'm tired of living among people who hate peace. For I search for peace, but when I speak of peace, they speak of war. That, that's what it feels like sometimes. You know, when the world gets to you, you start beating you up, Satan gets on you. But then he goes on in 121, he says, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. So here's... I was thinking about that. How can you be in the world and not of the world? What are the two things that everybody says, but they, 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 they don't mix? Come on, go ahead. Oil and water. Oil and water. How about that? Just happen to have some water. It's colored red so y'all can see it. And on top of it is a little oil. It's kind of like the Christians. They're, they're, they're separate from the world. They're separate from all the sin that's in that world. But what if you shake them up? What happens? See, they're all one, right? They all become one. They're all together, ain't they? Well, let's see. Because we're in this world just like everybody else. And yeah, we have a lot of the same temptations. We have a lot of the same the issues. We have depression. We have we have ailments. We have everything. I was talking to, to Warren Day when he said something about you know, you know feel a little pain. I said you know when you get our age, it's kind of a way of life. <laughs> I wake up every morning, you know, play the old back straightens out, and uh, you know my wife and I get together at night, talk about all the pains we're having. <laughs> Don't you love getting older? <laughs> anyway, it's just interesting how that although our pain keeps us from doing a lot of the things we would really like to do, we're still happy with our life. I wouldn't trade my life for any other in the world. We have a son that just gets depressed every time he thinks about getting older. He turned 30 and he thought he was like over the hill. <laughs> and ever since I was little and I don't know why but with me, ever since I was little I could not wait to get older <laughs> I couldn't wait till I could be old enough to be a dad and then when I became a dad I couldn't wait till I was old enough to be a grandfather well I really wanted to wait a, a little while you know <laughs> But I mean, I was, I was excited. I was going to get to be a grandpa. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it to the great grandpa stage. I think I'm just going to be a good grandpa. But <laughs> if I have to last that long, I'm excited about it. Yes, the bones are going to be more brittle, as I've found out several times this year. The bones are going to be more brittle. Muscles just ain't going to quite be what they used to be. The mind is not going to be quite as sharp. But life is so good. You get to see all these things God has, has blessed us with. And even though I'm getting older, I'm more blessed with each passing year. More and more blessed. <clears throat> Kind of like being in this life, but not of this life. Uh-oh, what's happening? Looks like the Christians are rising to the top, ain't they? How about that? They're separating now. You can be in this world, but not of this world. It's a very easy thing. Very easy. 
Because when Christ comes into your life and, and, and He rescues you from that sin of the world, He sets you apart. He pulls you apart and says, listen, you're in my family now. And, and I want to protect you. There, there's nothing going to hurt you. You're in my family now. And yeah, you're going to mess up. You're going to step on your tongue. You're going to kick yourself in the backside, but you're mine. And that'll never change. And when, when the devil comes up and tries to beat up on you, tries to cut you out of the herd, uh, the one I, I really love is them old uh, oxes from ox, musk oxes, whatever you call them, from uh, over in Africa. When them uh, lions come up and try to cut one of the calves out of the herd, all that mama's right make a make a line, and you ain't getting that baby. You know what I mean? You ever seen that on the, on the what Animal Planet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. You just can't beat Animal Planet and Discovery Channel. That's good stuff. That's what it's like. When the devil tries to beat you up, all you have to do is say, Hey, Lord. He just puts, it, puts little arms around you. Keeps you out. And, 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 but I wasn't born into his family. You don't have to be. I have children that are mine. That biologically I had nothing to do with. Cross one of them. When, when I was when, when I was little, uh, when I was little, when they were little, and 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 they were in my care. Cross one of them. I'm gonna be in your chest because you ain't touching my kids. Uh, it's I, I, it's just something in me that I have to protect mine. What's mine? And it's given to me by God. Because He is the same way. I'm going to protect what is mine. These are my children. Leave them alone, Satan. Now, when, when Job was tested, what happened? Uh, he, he, he talked to the devil. He said, hey, have you considered my servant Job? Job said, oh, no, Satan says, yeah, we've got that head built up around him. I can't touch him. God said, all right, I'll tell you what. Do what you want. Well, first he said, do what you want, but you can't, can't bother him. Can't bother his help. And that still didn't work. He said, all right, you can take some of his help, but you cannot kill him. That didn't work. Job knew. Job knew that God was still there. He never turned his back on God. Why? He knew God was going to protect him. God was going to take care of him. No matter what, God is there. Uh, I've been to the castles over here. Anybody been to a castle in Europe? Yeah. I'm telling you how to raise your hand. I know you all have. Uh, been inside one of the castles, and, and you look around these like walls this thick and you think, man, how can you not be safe in here? And you know, you see them on television shows when they talk about you moving into the fortress. That's a fortress. Folks, you ain't getting in there without a howitzer. And even then, you're going to have to work at it. That's what it's like being with Christ. Being in God's family. He separates you. And no matter how the world tries to mix you up in what they've got going on, He has set you apart and they cannot touch you. It is God's power that is ruling this world. It is God's mercy and God's kindness that has saved us. It ain't the devil's world. He's just paying rent like everybody else. He's pretty powerful, but he don't own it. God has set us apart. Now, I, I don't look a little cloudy, but you just let it set. Don't let it set here. And after church, I'll come look at it. It's going to be clear again. It's going to be clear. It's the way it is with us. The world seems like it's getting on us, but the more we get in 
God's Word, the more we stay on our knees and the more we interact with God, the clearer things get. And the more separation that there is between us and the world. I say that sitting right here. Standing. Standing right here. On the same stage where, where they, they talk about all these worldly things. We sit in the pews where they, where they sing about all these worldly things. They, I mean, sorry, we're at a bar. But you know what? We are, we are here. But we are not of the world. God has set us apart. How do I know? We're at church, ain't we? Are we worshiping the world right now? Better not be. This happens to be God's time. I saw a need. He said, we need to have a church right here. God put it on his heart. And look at this. How many people we got here today? Come on. How many people we got here today? 150. Huh? 150. Huh? All right. You're trying to get me to sing, ain't you? <laughs> we got a bunch. We got a bunch. But folks, this is what I'm talking about. God has set us apart as Christians. We are not part of the sinful world that we live in. But as we interact with them, as we come out here to, to hear us to, to the Shiner Sunday, if we go to a, a bar downtown to, to go in and have soda pop or whatever, if we act like Christians, if we talk like Christians, people see us as Christians. They see that there's something different about us. And I can tell you this, a Christian may not be the best dressed. They might be, but they might not be. They might not be the richest people, might not be the poorest people, but people can always tell there's something about that guy. There's something about that lady. And I've noticed, by the way, women get, women really get the short end of the stick on name calling. All right? I, I, I really hate this and I despise it. But there are a lot of pet names that guys come up for with women. You know? And I'm not going to say them because they ain't really socially acceptable. But I notice when they encounter a Christian woman, they either call her a lady or a woman. Have you ever noticed that? Unless they're just completely a degenerate. Why? <laughs> because they know there's something different about her. They know there's something different about her. I cannot tell you how many times that PJ and I went to a place and they've asked us, you know, I don't know, I, I can't remember all the things they asked us, but, you know, they end up, yeah, we're preaching at a cowboy church. Oh, okay, I knew there was something. We go up to Arkansas. Went to, uh, what, well, Olive Garden up in Arkansas. <coughs> Wait, talked to us for a little bit and when uh, she said I was a preacher at a cowboy church, I knew there was something different. I didn't know she meant I was different because I was a cowboy in Arkansas. Or <laughs> different just because of me. Yeah. But I like to think it's because we're Christians. We act like Christians. We talk like Christians. Okay, there's sometimes I don't act very Christianly, but then I have a conscience. God gave me a conscience, and she makes sure that I am reminded of that. Irishmen have that. Anyway. But we are set apart. And as a Christian, when we are set apart, in Hebrews 10 it says, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. Just like we're doing here. When we are set apart, we gain strength with each other. We get strength to come to church. 
Come to a Bible study. Have a group of Christians over to the house. Cook me some dead cow on the, on the grill. We gain strength being with each other. For two or more gathered in praying God's name, He's going to be there. Then I'll go one step further than that. God said, I will never leave nor forsake you. So that's two right there. So I'm never just one. I'm always two or more. Because God is always with me. When I see that, things start to get a little clearer. And the more I stay in the Word, the more I pray, the more I lose my temper, and then get on my knees and God, I'm sorry. The clearer things get. The more I get in the Bible and I read things like Psalm 120 and 121. I see how things get clearer. How the world tries to shield me from God. But you can't really do it. When I shook that up, that red hood color got a little lighter. It got a little lighter. You could almost see through it. As it separated out, the oil was getting clearer. Folks, if you do not have a a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, His Son, I'm telling you, you got to get that way. you got to get set apart. Because I promise you, the alternative is bleak. As I've said many times, I enjoy saying it because my Carl, a friend of mine, he said it. The alternative is bleak. Hell's hot, half full. Where are you going to go? And I mean hot too, okay? Not just a little warm. Not like the Texas heat hot. Folks, if you don't have a relationship with God, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, I'm going to show you how. It's just a simple prayer. I ask you to follow me. Lord, I come to you just to a sinner, Lord, and I, I, I've done wrong. Lord, I've been in this world, I've been of this world for so long. And my head is cloudy. But I look to you and I can see things clear. I see and I believe that Jesus Christ came into the world in the perfect life. <coughs> sacrificed himself on the cross. He died, was buried three days later, conquered death and was risen. And He lives with you today. And I know He's coming back. Lord, I ask that you fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Empty the sin out of me. So that you can set me apart and I can be with you on this earth. Be shielded from the evil. I ask the saints in your name. Remember the prayer that Christ prayed. He prayed this not only for his disciples, but everyone who was going to believe in him later. Now before I get off of here, I want to tell you something. Gathering yourselves together. Upcoming, there's a cowboy church school. They used to call it a planting school. But there's guys who are a whole lot smarter than me who are, are explaining to you the, the polity and the, the ins and outs of the cowboy church. It's on the 24th uh, of this month. The elders and lay pastors have all committed to go. Uh, Don and her family. There are several people have committed to go. It doesn't cost anything. We're all going to caravan down there to Tyler. It's awesome. It's a day that we can we can talk with other churches, see our other brothers and sisters, our extended family. It is, they have a heck of a lunch usually. And at Tyler, it's probably going to be really good lunch. I cannot express to you how important something like this is. 
if you want to go and you don't have a ride, we're going to make sure everybody gets there. If BJ and I go down and rent a bus, we're going to do it. Go down to my brother's school and get a school bus or something. But I cannot tell you how great it is to go to these. Fellowship with brothers and sisters, learn the ins and outs of, of how this cowboy church is supposed to work. I have a hard time explaining it all. It has nothing to do with my attention to death. What? Okay. But, I tell you, it's great. It's a great time. It's a great time. If you, don't have, any, if you have any questions about what I've been talking about up here, about going to school or, or, or salvation more, more especially. Sure. Oh, thank you. And if you're going to the Cowboy Church School, there is there is a shirts right over here. Let's all get a shirt that has our church logo on it. Or the new one where it has a truck. Would you like to say that I'm at a loss? I'm just kind of mad enough here. <laughs> Help me out. 